Hi, Nursing 613, Dr. Kim Paxton here. I'm recording your first overview for Module 1 and Module 2 for week number 1. Starting off each course as you have been instructed, you're going to find an overview of what will be occurring in each of the modules. For this first module, we're going to be looking at the different types of aspects that interplay into health promotion and lifestyle. Now many of you are going to be doing self-reflection and looking at your own lives as you're moving forward through this. But when we look at health promotion and prevention, it's much more than that and you're going to be finding that out. So read over the overview and take a look at the questions at the bottom as these will help guide you into what you're supposed to be learning and getting. The readings this week are really helpful and informative in helping you expand your understanding into what really is the nurse's and nurse practitioner role in relationship to health promotion and practice. Now the Institute of Medicine has been integral in developing guidelines and statements in relationship to what nurse practitioners and nurses in general should be doing in relationship to advancing health. One of the key initiatives that is embedded in the IOM is that health promotion and prevention is becoming a core element that is driving health care and health care change, and nurse practitioners are at the forefront of how this can be achieved. For your learning activities and discussion this week, we want to make sure that you look over the syllabus, check out your calendar, make sure that you're organized for class this week. Your small group discussions are also known as your small groups, and each of you has been assigned into one. If you're not sure which one you're in, please check under your people tab and that will tell you which group you're in. As an FYI, for some of the discussions, we ask that you post yours first before you can see another colleagues posting. So if you're the first per person to post in your discussion group, you may not see another individual's discussion until after you've posted. So just be aware of that. The readings this week really helped you support expanding your current understanding in relationship to what is health promotion and how you can apply it from a professional perspective. Your objectives this week are really quite simple ones. We're going to ask you to do the readings and do the learning and from that you should be able to assess an individual and understand where their actual health needs are and then work to be able to determine what recommendations you would put forward to help that individual try to maximize their health. You're going to examine health behavior and look at some change theories along with what you're learning in relationship to what is health promotion and prevention. <clears throat> change theories are really the cornerstone of how we work to think of initiating change for an individual or a patient or a population. They help us understand the barriers that we as care providers could encounter from our patient or communities when we're asking them to make changes. And the third thing you're going to be gaining from this is you're going to be able to understand how that community-based health promotion program really does integrate into individual or personal health. So as you're reading over chapter one, and your key takeaways are going to be what I have here. What is health? What is exercise relationship to this? How is there a holistic perspective to it? it? Where does spirituality come into it? How is it different for men, women, children, the elderly? Where do my, how does my environment come into this? How does my finance come into it? What interventions are appropriate for an individual to engage in for health promotion and prevention? What treatments do I have? Where's the evidence that tells me what to do? How does psychology come in? What is the issue of control, not just from the patient's perspective, but from yours as a health provider come into play? Because you want to control sometimes what that patient is doing, and when they don't do what you want them to do to maximize their health, it makes us irritated in a way because we're spending time and energy. So how do we work with this, and, and how do we overcome that barrier that can be there? Being healthy and fit isn't a fad or a trend. It's a lifestyle. And what you're going to be learning in this course over the next several weeks is how do you, one, from a personal perspective and individual, how do you maximize your lifestyle? And number two, how do you take 
the knowledge that you'll be learning in this and translate it into a working component of your practice to help another individual have a healthy, fit lifestyle. Chapter one, the health define, um, health define. All of us have a definition that we have inside of our head of what health is. And our textbook really will help hone a little bit and give you more of an evidence-based perspective about what health is. But you do need to read the chapter. This particular PowerPoint takes away key excerpts from that chapter and really helps to hone down some key components of takeaways in relationship to what that chapter is presenting to you. So please make sure you read that chapter because it's really informative. The next piece you're going to be doing in this first week is you're going to introduce yourselves to all of us. Who are you? Now the pictures that you see here on the screen, they're of us, your instructors. Can you guess which one is Scott? And can you guess which one is me? I'm not a CrossFitter, but I do exercise quite significantly because I have a, doctor, a daughter who is an exercise physiologist. And not being physically fit and engaging in that as a health promotional aspect of my life is unacceptable to her. To give you a hint, green is my favorite color. Module two is a carryover for week number one. And in the second module for week number one, you're going to be learning about levels of prevention and social determinants of health. When we talk about levels of prevention and social determinants of health, these really are integral into understanding why some people, some diverse populations, may not be able to achieve their maximum health. The picture that you see here on the screen really helps you gain an understanding of the different types of aspects of health promotion. So we have the um, primary prevention, secondary prevention, tertiary prevention, and premortal um, prevention. So what do all these and, and how do they interplay in and what's my role in these? Well as you do the readings and do the assignments for this week, you'll begin, you'll begin to get an understanding of what these different levels of health promotion and prevention actually are and how you as a nurse practitioner actually interplay into each of these and with respect to your patients. Now not every patient is going to come in needing primary prevention. They may come in needing secondary or even tertiary. Where do you as a nurse practitioner think you can make your biggest impact on your patient? At the bottom I've got a couple of questions for you. I want you to expand your thinking. You really need to hone in on gaining a great understanding of what primary and secondary prevention is because that's where your bang for your buck is going to come as a nurse practitioner and especially in primary care practice. And then you really need to gain a great understanding from the learnings of what role do the social determinants pay in affecting primary and secondary and tertiary prevention. Okay? How do you how do we understand this and and how do I work with this with a patient? Depending upon what area of the country you live in, you can have different social determinants interplaying in on these aspects. And the last question I have down here, how can you as an MP impact a person's health by understanding these primary and secondary prevention aspects, the, um, the pre-mortal, which I can't say, and the tertiary prevention? There's a video for you to watch in module number two about social determinants of health. And in this particular video, it goes over each of the affecting factors that integrate into social determinants of health. Your income, education, race, transportation, housing, health insurance is a big one, food access, and the complex health needs. It'll help you understand how each of these interplays into preventative practice, but also how we can work for promotion. Please do not skip over this video as it is really a great video and really help you understand um, what's going on. There are also some linkages for you to look at preventative strategies and screenings, the U.S. Preventative Task Force. When we talk about prevention, we do a lot as nurse practitioners in relationship to screening our patients. We do it verbally by asking them questions, getting through their um, history of present illness, through their review of systems, 
how they've been carrying themselves, but then we have to go even deeper. And we know historically that if we do specific screenings of our individuals, we can prevent some of the disease processes and actually put into place preventative strategies to keep them from extenuating if we find them to be present. Not only do we have them for adults, but we also have them for the pediatric and adolescent population. So depending upon if you're an AGMP or if you're an FMP student, you'll have to expand your scope of understanding, especially for FMP to include that P population. And at the end of module two, you do have a discussion. So in this discussion, you're gonna be asked to bring forward what your thoughts are in relationship to the questions related to primary prevention, social determinants, and then Dr. Jones's cliff analogy, what do you think it really is? So in order for you to answer these questions appropriately and in a scholarly fashion, you are gonna to have to do the readings and the viewings that you have been given this week. Please make sure that you're posting and then responding to another individual as the instructions request. If you have any questions or concerns in relationship to understanding, please make sure you're emailing either myself or Dr. Harpin, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Enjoy this week's learning. Look forward to seeing you online.